Today we are going to take a look at the best AI of all time. Wait, what's going on? Has a geolite. We have info transmitted to our computer. And there's nothing you can do to get it back. <laughs> Sorry guys, I'm back. I just had to reboot my computer. But don't worry, everything's okay. Oh god damn it! Okay, so now I'm really back. Um, I had to tone down the algorithm, but it's all A1, now we're good. So, in this video, we will discuss how to make an intricate AI that takes into account all desirable and undesirable locations and makes a decision based off these parameters. This method is also reusable and can be easily tweaked and customized for various enemies. Lastly, the explanation I'm going to give is engine independent. I used Godot to implement, but we will be discussing the idea behind it, not much code. So I must give credit where credit is due. A huge part of this implementation was inspired by this video from Game Endeavor. Watching his video absolutely blew my mind. And my implementation started from him recommending a chapter from this AI book. The chapter went over context steering behaviors, a concept that was brought forward by this man. Craig Reynolds bestowed onto the world methods of creating artificial life and is best known for creating the herd algorithm. No, not that herd. <laughs> The herd algorithm is a technique for giving a group of objects realistic collective behavior. And in order to start off our implementation, we need an array of eight directions. Each direction represents which way our entity can go. Now in game dev, instead of saying direction, we say vector. So with vectors, not only do we know where, but we also know how fast, or the magnitude. Okay, so we have an array of eight vectors. Each vector is represented by two numbers, like x and y. So right would be 1, 0, and left would be negative 1, 0. And this is where it gets fishy in Godot, because up is 0, negative 1, and down is 0, 1. I know in geometry it's the opposite, but that's the way this game engine works. Unity and Unreal are different. So anyways, these are the vectors for each direction, and they must be normalized, which just means that their length must be 1. And now we need to add 8 raycasts for each direction. These will be our senses, and they will be used to detect danger and incentive. A raycast basically gives us information of what it's colliding with. And once that's done, we're ready for step one, which is getting the optimal direction for our entity. And thankfully in Godot, we have a navigational 2D node, which will return the path to desirable objects. Problem with using their function is it skims walls and it's easy to get stuck. But that's okay, because our algorithm will fix this. And once we get the vector pointing towards our character, it's when the mathematical magic begins. So here's an example in-game of how we handle the vectors. So our entity's position is 930 by 580. When we get the vector pointing towards our player, we get 528 by 583. But we need the local vector, which makes our center 0, 0. So when we get the local vector, it's negative 2.3 by 2.6. Once we get the local vector, we need to normalize it. And once normalized, it's negative 0.6 by 0.7. We take this vector and we get the dot product with each direction. Getting the dot product between two vectors just returns a number. The higher the number, the more similar that vector is. So I'm naming the array of dot products the interest vector, because from it, we can see what direction our entity desires and what direction it doesn't really care much about. And next, we're going to get the dangers using our array of eight raycasts. If the raycast bumps into anything we label a danger, we choose a number and place it in that corresponding direction. It should be greater than 1. I like to use 5. And I also pad out the directions adjacent so we really know to avoid that direction. So we now have an interest array and a danger array. And now what we're going to do is subtract the interest from the danger, which will give us a new array, which I call the context map. So the highest value in this context map corresponds to the best direction, which takes into account the interests and the dangers. We now have the most desirable vector, but we want our entities to move smoothly, not jittery and robotic. This is where the steering comes into play. So here's the function for the steering force. Steering force equals desired velocity minus current velocity. So we're going to multiply the steering force by delta and then add it to our velocity and we're good to go. There's a value you can multiply to your steering force before making it your velocity. And the higher the value, the more sharp the turn, and the lower the value, the more rounded the turns. And this is good because it makes the movement more lifelike. So as of now, we have created Spartans that are very good at dodging and chasing us. 
but we all know that that ain't the best AI ever. The beauty of the system is we are able to combine interests. For instance, in my Greek RPG, we have a boss battle with a certain satyr called Silenus. During phase 1, I made Silenus interested in running away, so that he can get a distance before he does his ranged attack. When I implemented this, I had the issue of him hugging the walls in the battle arena too much, so I got the interest array of him running away, and I added it to another interest array of him being interested in the center of the arena. And after doing it, it worked like a charm, honestly I was so surprised. And this is also why it's important to have your danger as a bigger number, like 5 and up. Because if you're adding multiple interests together, you start getting numbers bigger than one. And when that happens, the danger has to outweigh the interest. Next, I'd like to talk to you about state machines, because I promise to give you a reusable implementation. So when using state machines, you should have one central script that's in charge of changing states and making sure that you're in one state at a time. Here's an article showing off the implementation I used. In Unity, you can just inherit from state machine instead of model behavior. In Unreal, I don't know, I'm sorry. And whenever you create a new state, like for instance, chase or runaway state in that script, you need functions that handle entering and exiting the state. Also, an important rule of thumb is that each state should never be in charge of changing states. The state should only control behaviors and emit signals or events at particular points. An enemy script should be in charge of receiving those signals and deciding what to do with it. For instance, in my game I have a bear and a spartan. They both switch to chase states when I get close and I use the exact same chase script for both of them, hence the reusability. Once these enemies are 300 pixels away from me, they both emit a close to signal. But the Spartan has a different script from the bear, so when the Spartan receives that signal, he changes to a circle state, which favors a tangent vector and a vector towards our player, which causes the entity to circle around the player. But when the bear receives this close to signal, it just ignores it and keeps chasing our player. Then, when the bear is right next to our player, it emits a signal next to. And when the bear gets the signal, it switches to an attack state. <sighs> once you understand this concept, you can create the state once, and you can mix and match the states to create really unique and cool enemies efficiently. And there you have it, my regurgitation of everything I learned while implementing this state-of-the-art enemy AI. I hope you enjoyed this little breakdown and just wanted to give a big thank you to all my Patreons. Takumi, Svetliaka, 92, Clayman, Velki, Michael Schefenacker, and Raziel. Thank you so much, and if you'd also like to support me, my Patreon has different tiers where you can gain access to a demo of the game and the source code, and also behind the scenes and more. Check it out if you're interested. If you want to watch me develop games, you can check me out on my Twitch. I also have updates on my Twitter. Bye! Oh my god. <laughs>